I come to you today through this forest of lights. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult to work out which precision spotlight you should use on your project. Well today, I'm going to briefly go through the differences between Retro, Microspot, Evo, Evo T and Evo Zoom. And by the end of it, I think you'll get a better idea. I hope you enjoy the video. Be discussing Evo Zoom, Microspot 16, Retro 16, Evo 11, Evo T11, Microspot 11, and finally Retro 11. I wanted to start off in the order that they were released. Evo started off as a halogen fixture, but is now a fully moduled LED spotlight. Evo has an easily removable snoot. I rotate it anti-clockwise and I take it off. Underneath that snoot, you'll see the collimator, the microprismatic lens, and a front bezel. If I unscrew that front bezel, I gain access to the lens, which changes the beam angle. This optic is an ultra narrow, so if I want to make this nine, I just pop that in the front and screw the bezel back on. When reattaching the snoot, I take two location markers, these two little dots, and I align them. I then push and rotate. The snoot's then attached. So what are the features of the Evo that you should be aware of? Well, you already know that you can easily change the snoot. You can also have the Evo with a longer snoot or a glare guard snoot. Evo is lockable in pan and tilt. You'll see that up here we have two locking indicators and next to them two grub screws. This little grub screw locks the tilt and this grub screw locks the pan. The next fitting to discuss is Evo T. The T denotes that it has a side entered stem instead of the rearward stem of the normal Evo. But apart from that, all of its features are the same. But having a side stem means it's more useful for certain applications. For example, if this was being mounted on the edge of a ledge and you wanted the light to emanate down, this is the perfect option because it also means you can angle it back. We also do a version of Evo called Evo S. Evo S11 has a long stem, very useful for a picture light or when you want to light over the edge of a cove. The next fitting is Evo Zoom. You'll notice it looks very similar to the Evo. It has two locking grub screws for pan and tilt, a snoot which is removable, the body, but it has a thicker black band. And if you spin the black band, it moves. Well, if we take off the snoot, you'll see why. Evo Zoom is a zoomable fitting. If you look down the barrel, you will actually see a different optic to what we use in the normal Evo 16. And if I now rotate the ring, you can see the optics moving forwards and backwards. We have a little indicator here to roughly indicate beam angle, or at least where it is in the throw, and a third locking grub screw. Evo Zoom is our premium product. It commands the highest price, but without question, gives you the most flexibility. The next fitting is Microspot 16 and Microspot 11. It is a pure cylindrical fitting. You'll notice that there is no locking. I cannot lock the pan or the tilt. You'll notice the knuckle is of a different design. If I unscrew the snoot, you'll notice hopefully that the optic is identical to the Evo system. Again, if I want to change the beam angle, I unscrew the bezel and with discs, you can go from six degrees to 50 by just changing those discs. It's a very simple flow path repeat from the LED chip to the outside world. And these radial fins gives a little bit extra cooling. Because Microspot is a more simple design, it means that producing them in fancy finishes is more straightforward. This finish is polished brass. It is made from solid brass, polished and lacquered. The next fitting I want to discuss is Retro 11 
and Retro 16. The keen-eyed amongst you will notice the radial fins at the top of the fittings. Don't they look really similar to the Microspot 11 and Microspot 16? And in fact they are. Which means if I took our Microspot again and I unscrewed the snoot, you can see that the body of the fitting is identical. That's wonderful for a manufacturer because it means we can have two families out of one core body. And the only thing we change is the snoot, not that you'd necessarily ever want to have polished brass and aluminium together. So why would you pick a retro over a microspot? Well, it's aesthetics. The retro has the exposed fins. The retro looks a little bit smaller to the eye than a microspot does. So why would you use retro or microspot instead of the Evo? Well, you might have a project which doesn't require locking and pan and tilt. Maybe it doesn't require different snoot options. Maybe you wanted to use Evo but simply don't have the budget anymore. Retro and Microspot give exactly the same optical output as the Evo, but just have a few less features. One thing that all these fixtures have in common is the jack plug. The jack plug can be used in the track adapter, like this re-track adapter, or monopoints, like this surface monopoint. Whether it's an 11 series spotlight or a 16, the LED chip behind the optics is always identical. The two different sizes of fittings do use different optic sizes, but surprisingly give very similar colour temperatures and chromacities. With regard to price, a Microspot or Retro is about 15% less than an Evo. That might not sound like a huge difference, but when you have hundreds of spotlights on a project, that quickly adds up. Thank you so much for watching. So in conclusion, whether it's a Retro or a Microspot, or an Evo, they all use the same LEDs and optics for their series, so 11s use the same, 16s use the same. Evo Zoom kind of sits out on its own, it's a spectacular fitting, it zooms, it locks. Evo is fully lockable in pan and tilt, you have different options of snoots readily available, whereas Retro and Microspot have fixed snoots. Of course, Evo is more expensive. It has all the features, but if you just want great quality light, but you're on a budget, nothing wrong with Retro or Microspot. It's been a pleasure. I love doing these videos for you. Thank you so much for the great feedback, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.